Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to look at selecting data into JSON. And we have two different mechanisms that we can use to do that, to JSON and JSON Ag. Let's take a look at each. I've got a single store database fired up, and I'm in single store studio where we can look at it. Let's create the database here on the server. Now with that database created, let's use that database. We're going to create a table. This table has three columns, a name, a type, and an amount. Now with those three columns, let's add some data. This is completely random data from randomuser.me, and we now have 10 rows. We have a name, we have a type or domain, and we have an amount. Let's take a look at that data. Yep, we've got all of our data in place. This looks great. To JSON. When we use to JSON, we get an object with each of the properties in place. So in this case, I have three columns selected, and I've got an object with each of those three columns in it. I can omit a column and select again. And now I only have those two pieces. We're using this subquery here so that we can get all of the data from this subquery into the toJSON function. Perfect. On the upside, toJSON allows us to create objects really easily from non-JSON data. On the downside, we have a result set with different rows. We don't have a JSON object. Now that's where JSON ag comes in. Let's take a look at this data. Well, what if we want to group by type? So we have one to brown.org, six to gmail.com, three to demarco.com. Now JSON ag is a really great way of getting data into JSON and smushing them all into one big object. So for example, now we have an array of each of the names. Brown.org has only one record, so there's only one element in the array. Gmail, granted this is fictitious data, but we have six names here in gmail.com. demarco.com has three. JSON ag was able to create this into a JSON object so that we could take a look at all of the pieces. So let's nest this JSON ag by saying JSON ag for all of the results from this subset that we just ran. Now we have one big object, that's cool. Let's select this one big object and come in here to a JSON formatter that'll be able to look at it more completely. Great, so in brown.org we have one record and in now we have uh, five records in gmail.com and three records in DeMarco. Now what we see here that's interesting is that we have amount, name, and type. We have all three fields. Now that's interesting, but it might be more effective for us to yank out some pieces. So let's create this record variable that includes all of the details that is specific only to the amount and name. We have the type out here. So here's the amount and name, amount and name, and so now we have this nested JSON array. Now we can pipe that into JSON ag. And so we can take a look at the entire query and we get one big object. Perfect. Let's come back into the JSON formatter and take a look at this. Process. Great. Let's zoom in a tad and take a look at these results. For brown.org, here's our records, and we only have those two fields that we needed. For Gmail, we have the name and amount of all of these people, and we have these three records as well. With two JSON and JSON ag, we can select what is otherwise just regular data and pull it into interesting JSON objects. Recall that this is just regular relational data. There's no JSON columns here. But with two JSON and JSON ag, we can form really interesting JSON objects and return them directly from our processor. Thanks for watching.